The dialogue between leadership and the led has always been a volatile one that swings on trust, just like every other relationship. When trust is lost, it saddens me to see that amidst all the headlines of probes and lootings, and this didn't start today, whether of the NDDC, which allegedly casts a shadow as far as the National Assembly, the EFCC, Magu Malami Saga, or even queries as to indemnity for defaulting on acquired loans, our leadership don't seem to realize that the key connecting factor between the headlines is the departure of trust. Instead, arguments are made as to how bridges, railways, railway projects, and even skyscrapers have been built for us, and yet we remain ungrateful and complaining. Hmm. Ask any wife who suspects her husband of cheating, whether the husband is finally taking responsibility for a few necessary and some unnecessary household requirements ever placated her. I wouldn't know, so don't ask me. However, her response may go something like this. If he likes, he should Kukuma not sort out the home front. She'll be wearing this together. The problem with this comparison, however, is that our leaders cannot even boast of being in it together with us. We recently read of our president's beloved nephew, Maman Daura, being flown to the UK, once borders would allow, in a private jet, no less. The first lady returning from health tourism in Dubai with a charge to our healthcare providers to upgrade the home care services. <laughs> no kidding. Trust points to the language of love, care, and even respect. Where this is lacking, there is a communication breakdown, and things will predictably fall apart. Take the recent examples of Lebanon, Lebanon and Mali as a case in point. It doesn't matter that you insist you're governing in the people's best interests. The truth is that the people are not children and are capable of engaging in a dialogue concerning what is really in their best interest. They're not blind to your hypocrisies or deaf to your double speak. The contract of trust should be carefully addressed and nurtured wherever there's a partnership between the leaders and the led, in our homes, places of work, and yes, in governance. Systems of accountability and engagement should be built in and regularly appraised from inception. Parents, don't assume to lord it over your children just because they aren't as mature as you. Begin to develop the language of self-determination and engagement in them, since charity begins at home. CEOs, bosses, and management, employees are not tools to achieve your aims. They're human beings with a will and emotions. And you'll discover that they are most effective when they commit to your vision with their soul. So be careful not to trample on the same by being inconsiderate. Those in or aspiring to go into governance, the people, are the same as you, merely on the other side of the divide, not lesser. In fact, it would do you good to see them as more worthy. That way, the language of service and care will shape your actions. Trust cannot be bought by the tangible, such as bridges, railways, skyscrapers, or even stomach infrastructure. We must go back to the fundamentals of nurturing trust through the intangibles of accountability and engagement. Back to earning trust through the sincere language of love and respect. Other than this, we can only wait till the voice of protest reaches a critical mass, since apart from trust, the center cannot hold. Um, almost similar to what we were talking about with Chuka's advocacy. Uh, but um, my only point of a departure is that uh, trust to a very large extent can be won with uh, some of this infrastructure. I'm just going to say. Yeah. yeah. Mm, trust yeah. can be won with, because the essence of gov governance, like you are, are agreed, is uh, to provide some of these basic things. And then um, failure to provide them, you know, breach the trust that the people repose in you. And, and so when you begin, when the people now see you, you know, go back to providing these things, it's like, ah, that was what, that, I, that's why I tell people that APC today should thank Fashola. What led to the emergence of APC was the good works of Fashola's government in Lagos. That people were like, oh no, a governor could actually do this. And so that trust, people started paying taxes voluntarily. And, and so you now saw that people opted for that party, ACN. Oh, since we, they, they have you know, a performing governor in Lagos, let us have similar people in, in governance. So gradually you started winning trust. And so for me, those of our politicians out there, when you make a promise, the moment you break that promise is a breach of trust. And so your promise is your manifestos during election. 
And when you say, I will build roads, don't build one and now ask me to, you know, thank you. Or you pay salaries and say they are dividends of democracy. These are ways of building trust. Mm -hmm. And when we gradually do that, you'll be shocked. Nigerians are very easy people, you know, to appease. Mm -hmm. They will sing your praises to high heavens. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that's true. Um, so okay, then, it's very interesting. Okay, let me just jump in. Uh, okay, okay, let's said about the husband okay, and, and yes, suspecting exactly. white cheating. <laughs> and for me, it's, it's not really strictly true because you can actually buy law. I mean, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, had this case in Colorado. And um, he, his wife um, said nothing. And the next time we saw our photo up, she had a huge rock on her finger. And of course, um, you saw everything play out. And he was the best husband thereafter. So actually, you can buy trust to some extent. Now, if you look at um, what's happening in the United States today, there's an election going on. And um, the, the president who said he did everything in his manifesto and the obvious lies. Again, we we'll watch it, see how the election turns out. But to some extent, um, what um, the liberal is saying is correct. You can actually buy um, people's trust by what you do because money is money. You know, so what you invest in shows me where your heart is. And um, so if everything is working well in the home, some, some people may even turn the blind eye to what's going outside, um, on outside, as long as we are all comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my, my own take from this is you definitely put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. If the um, first lady is coming from Dubai and telling us that uh, our healthcare system doesn't work, it's an indictment to her because they're in government. And why should she go to Dubai in the first place when there's a um, um, clinic in, in Astro Rock? Anyway, um, bottom line is put your money where your mouth is. Trust will come. Mm. I think also what it is is that when you promise something, uh, keep doing it. I think yeah. another problem with Nigeria is they promise you a railway, they buy second-hand trains. You break the trust while trying to get it. What you should be doing is basically buying good trains that look like the trains in Venice, supply them, even if they're only two, start like that, and you win the trust fully. They so say we're, they're not second-hand trains. So I, I hope they're not, but they look very second-hand to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't prove I it, but they look very second-hand to me. And very, think, on, and very think, uncontemporary. That's the best way to put it. Yes. They, uh, they don't look like they were made today. But at least to some extent, <laughs> we are seeing trains. Yes. Uh, I, I don't think there's any clear court answer to this. Oh, Cro gosh. Trust could be relative. For instance, a politician that is sponsored by the party, his loyalty, trust to be to the party bankrolled. might not necessarily that is bankrolled. bankrolled. I understand. So it may not necessarily <laughs> be in the interest of the general populace. Yeah. So as as far as you're taking care of your yes. constituency, you can be removed you're, from office you're fine. From not, you understand? Uh, because we've seen we've seen that play out with uh Edo. No, Lagos State. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. You yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the man was seen to be doing, but because doing well, he did yes. not speak to a certain constituency, he was removed. Yeah. You know, well, so I, I guess maybe I'm going back to the good old fashioned. Sorry, I, I should really <laughs> hold my peace on this one because I had the floor. Mm. But I, I'm going back to good old fashioned because what what I see is connecting between what uh, Libros and Chuka said, and to some extent, even you, Rookie, is that. That, that action of itself, buying someone a cow a rock on their finger, will not breed trust. All it no. means is that I've held you accountable for your cheating. But the thing that breeds trust is you're keeping your word. So if you yeah. promise me something and you do it, that's the trust. But go, trying to somehow cover my eye, if I know you're a dodgy person, you're a dodgy person, doesn't matter how many railways no, you No, for you. If you're looting, no, for you. you give me small railway, I'm still watching no, you from the corner for of my you. eye. Yeah, that's and right. I'm still no, watching that's you. Why, that's what Seydou is saying. Mm. For you, you know, it's bigger than that. But for mm. some people... All they smaller, need yes. to buy their trust is just do little. So, so why is it that we're still struggling to trust our government despite all these other things? Even while you're struggling, there are some people that will die for this same government. Oh they will my. tell you, look, <laughs> this is the best that we've got. <laughs> I need to meet them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, talking about challenges with engagement and accountability. After the break, Seydu raises a topical case in point. Over to you, Seydu.